welcome to After Credit Movie Chat's review for The Martian. Gonna be doing this a little bit different this week, but overall, what'd you guys think? Uh, one of the best movies I've seen all year. I say that right off the bat. It was a great movie, it kept me engaged all two hours and 12 minutes. It's just. What, it just amazing. two hours and 12 minutes in official time by <laughs> you? Or? Uh, quality <laughs> movie? Because he has no answer for that. So yeah, uh, The Martian, great movie, never boring once, even flawless transitions between uh, uh, NASA and Mr. Mark yeah, Watney himself. Uh, quick little thing, some synopsis here of the plot is Matt Damon plays Mark Watney, gets stranded on Mars after presumed he's dead, and then it's kind of him fighting to survive. Uh, while NASA tries to work out a way to either save him or decide to leave him behind, depending on which seems safer for the rest of the crew. So, and for me, I think Matt Damon was the perfect choice to play Mark Watney because he's such a likable guy. You're rooting for him. And he really has that kind of good, witty, sarcastic humor. And that's exactly what this character was. And it worked very well. It's great because his personality, just even though he's trained on Mars, he's, he's very lighthearted, just always cracking jokes. I've actually read the first two thirds of the book and didn't finish it. And that was one of the reasons he was brought on the mission for his personality, because when all the astronauts are cooped up in uh, tight space, they wanted someone who could make the crew laugh. So because, Ken? Well, because you read the book, I wanted to ask, did they make any drastic changes? Is it pretty close to the book? As overall, I guess, plot goes, maybe not individual um, dialogue, but... All of the plot, the only thing is, like most books, they had to cut some stuff out. His journey to the Pathfinder was much longer in the book. Are we doing spoiler free? By the way? Yeah, we're, we'll keep this spoiler free just because it's opening weekend. Hopefully, you guys have some of you guys probably haven't seen. And it yet. some minor differences in the movie: they start on Soul 18 of the journey, and in the book, they start on Soul 6. Soul but... being like Mars, Mars days, days on Mars. Is how yeah, so I looked at. It. Very minor changes, some one-liners. They. Uh, missed out on but other other ones were still just great yeah, yeah I, almost every single joke landed for me and i is it brian who was kind of like the asian scientist i actually found him quite humorous uh, he bruce was i believe bruce okay he found him quite funny with the quite a bit like with the one joke where he goes um i'm gonna need to change your clothes i don't think enough people <laughs> laughed at but clearly he was referring to that he just crapped himself because of what he had to do and uh so yeah it all the characters i fully believable even the uh the director of nasa teddy you really understood why he didn't want to necessarily risk all the crew members it was like oh it's a, it's a money reasons like no it's we either had can save one or we can get all or five of our astronauts back like calculating the risk yeah there. like he wasn't like a uh He's not your prototypical villain where he was only out for one. Like you saw or his businessman where it's yeah. like, oh, it's all about one now. He, he was wasn't like, actually he caring. He wasn't a villain per se. He was just the opposite point of view, more or less. Um, I guess let's go through what you guys will go through what we liked, what we didn't like. Let's start with what we liked. Cam, you haven't said much, so. Just eating your popcorn back there. <laughs> yeah. um, I really liked um, the scenery of the movie, I think, is very. Colorful, very well done. Yeah, I kind of thought like you're. You think they shot it on Mars? It's weird. It's, it, it felt like I was there, and just seeing it in extreme just made everything more real. Um, I loved Matt Damon's performance as Mark Watney, but I gotta say, if it was Mark Wahlberg playing <laughs> a character named Matt Dame, I also would have liked that. Cam can't figure out who <laughs> Matt Damon and Mark Wahlberg are separately. He's got problems. All right, Doug. I guess let's uh, go to you then. Well. Reading the book, our first two thirds of it, was really excited for it because I was really enjoying it, just didn't have time to finish it. Slow reader. And there was some minor things they kept out, but the movie was still freaking great. Made me laugh. It was really, there was parts of suspenseful where I was leaning in the front of my seat because I didn't you know, finish the book. I didn't know how it ended. So I was still, my heart was just pounding and it was great every moment. Yeah, uh, for me, for any of you guys that, you know, check out my website or our website, I'll plug myself real quick fast, uh, aftercreditmoviechats.wordpress.com. My most anticipated for the rest of the year that I put out, this didn't even make my list. Ridley Scott hasn't been doing anything real terrific lately, so I was not real excited, but then I started hearing these reviews. I was like, all right, I got to check this movie out. And it, it is so, so good. You're into it the whole time. As Cam said, it's almost two hours, 15 minutes, and you're never bored once. Yeah. Uh, and then I also like the way they transition between Matt Damon, Mark Watney, and Mars, and NASA. 
you never, it was never like took you out of it or like, well, that came out of nowhere. Like they did it really flawlessly. The humor always worked. And every character, they didn't give too, one character too much time. They had a lot of great actors. And every this. character, even the minor ones that you thought NASA, uh, like Rich Fresnel, even his smaller parts, they still had great personality from the bug. They were, they were their characters. And, it felt real. They didn't yeah. feel like a, just like a made up weird character. Yeah, because it's like this nerd, he didn't really understand. He's like, all right, I'm doing math. And he didn't really care for like uh, upper things of authority. So he's just kind of doing his thing. And very believable. Just everything worked. Yeah, yeah you yeah. could almost, if you didn't know and you told somebody, oh, this is based on a true story, they they might be willing to believe you because it they executed as though it is. Nothing looked like special effects. It very, yeah, everything very just true. seemed real. Nothing seemed too shiny and ever it was just executed there just sometimes like special effects it looks shiny, can you can tell it's fake. But this everything just kinda looked like it was up in space. Like Apollo thirteen. It looks real. Yeah, this very much feels almost like a blend between Apollo 13 and Castaway. It's kind of got like both of the qualities to it. How do you guys Mine is Tom there? Hanks in both of them, though. That's very true. Well, well, Tom Hanks no. actually sent out a tweet saying he wish he had gotten the role. Oh, uh, yeah. as he would have been a bit old. Joke, obviously. Oh, so yeah, he would have been a bit old for Mr. Watney. All right, Kane, what were you going to say? Uh, I, I know people are going to wonder, how do you compare this to the other space movies that have been recently released by right. Gravity and Interstellar? Well, as when this movie was announced, I think a lot of people might make jokes. Well, this is Interstellar too, because you got Jessica Chastain and Matt Damon, who's stranded into the space movie. But they're almost nothing alike, so don't worry about that. I'm not the biggest fan of Gravity. I really enjoyed Interstellar, but I like this one more in being that in Interstellar, so many of the things went way over your head just because I'm not real well versed in science. So but like, Matt Damon made it easy to understand. Well, yeah, so, you know, I liked how they didn't dumb it down. He didn't feel like they were talking to you like a child, but they did it enough so I could easily understand. It's so easy to follow that I think I would put this one just a little bit ahead of Interstellar, and I really enjoyed Interstellar. I really say that Interstellar was great. This had a little more entertainment value to it. You don't have yeah. to. They make it so you have to think, but not to the point of where you got to contemplate after the movie. What the heck did that? Just, what happened? Yeah, very easy to understand, comprehend. You don't really leave with a ton of questions, which is good. You just it wraps the story up perfectly. I will say I did kind of miss that they didn't give all the astronauts as much time as I wanted because they were also pretty funny when he was typing all of his individual messages back and forth. But either way, again, just all the acting, phenomenal cast. Yes, very great cast. And I just lost my train of thought, so I'll try be editing to... Those and excuse the shaky cam, by the way, we are on the highway. Yeah, we're trying something new. Uh, so... After the great movie chats on the road. My on the segment. road. Uh, and when the trailers came out, which they came out with quite a few of them, I know a lot of people were worried that they gave away too much. Not the case at all, because there was a lot of this movie that I did not see coming, did not know what to expect. And I also, from the trailer, thought maybe there'd be more of a, not a blend, but maybe half, 50-50 between Matt Damon on Mars alone and NASA, which it's a very good blend, but there's more Damon on Mars than I expected, and it was a a, a good thing. I really liked the part with him on Mars. It was, so, it was very engaging, yeah. funny, and just the entertainment value was great. There was a sl little bit in the middle-ish where they kind of went away from Mark for a while, and that was like depressing because he kind of did steal the show every time he was there. And, but either uh, that was like a very minor thing. Or like you didn't really feel it like any one mark or NASA dragged on. It little par, I guess. NASA. Yeah. Got a and tiny well, and bit like more. we said, all the jokes that the Iron Man joke was great, but especially when uh, they make the Elrond joke for Lord of the Rings with yeah. Sean being right in the room. That was, that was pretty funny. And I will say too, because some movies like different genre, but the Avengers movies, anytime the movie tries to get serious, the joke really. They make it some quick whip and all tension's gone in this. Yes. The tension was still there and they might make a slight joke, but it's like it's a joke and it kinda makes that and eh, added to the like, tension. It's like a good mood sort of. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly. it led, like almost nervous type of laugh, like huh, uh, uh, like but your heart's still pounding. It doesn't Yeah, it doesn't take away from it. It doesn't take all. yeah, and that was perfect and that's what I think some movies need to go or do better is Makes your jokes with suspense, but don't ruin the suspense. Like, oh, we're trying to still be funny, so we gotta get rid of all seriousness at all times. Well, we always and, and speaking of the Avengers, I, just because it's a quick thing, uh, Sebastian Stan plays the Winter Soldier. I, I kind of liked his a part in it because I've never seen him in anything. So I kind of thought it was cool to finally see him. Who was, who was he in the movie? Um, he was a dude that got the piss on the, the suit. Yeah. Oh, see, that was the thing. He 
they didn't develop like he got the little kiss there. In the book, they had a little bit more relationship developing. But his character, he was the least astronaut in the movie that talked. Right, yeah, they definitely just developed Damon's character and Jeff Daniels and kind of like Commander. Yeah, and then Commander Lewis, she had quite a bit. But I like Commander Lewis in the book as well. All right, and this will probably be a very short thing because I have very little complaints, but I guess maybe a couple things that we didn't like or we thought were a little off could have been fixed. Okay, let's start with you again. Um, there was a couple of scenes trying to show the transitional period of uh, Mark Watney being uh, starved after continuously living on Mars with my rationing. And um, there's just a couple of jump cut scenes I didn't really appreciate. And, uh, but that's, that's about it for me. You know, the body double they used for Damon in those scenes was kind of nose, but you could tell they wouldn't show his face, and they actually didn't want Damon to lose tons of weight for two very brief scenes, but it did kind of take you out of it for just a quick second. But that's that's a small thing. And then the one other thing is I do understand what they were going for, but I found it a little weird that when they were attempting the rescue mission, they're going through the transmissions, that they were broadcasting them to the public in general. Like, you think if something were to go wrong, you wouldn't want the public to hear like people dying or panicking. Or NASA is a public see. domain thing, so that is kind of grounded in real yeah, I do understand that. It just it just feels like maybe they wouldn't have done that. Yeah. Maybe, maybe they would. I guess because they, they do that 24 hour grace period. Type right. Thing. Yeah. My only complaint is there was parts uh, in the book that I feel like they missed. The whole Chinese thing, the whole big deal was they had to get Chinese astronauts to go on the next mission, uh, which they didn't really touch on at all. And other like minor things that I don't want because it kind of they're spoilers I don't want to say it but again if you haven't read the book it's not good to, the movie executed what it did well but there's some things I was looking for some specific jokes that just didn't make it other than that it was just still just an amazing movie and real quick back on the positive side of things I really like the subtlety of this movie it would make certain things or little plot points that they didn't hammer you with but like I really like how people were, it was like good people that were willing to help. A single person was worth going through all this trouble. And how kind of like the whole, the whole world rallied behind it just to save Mark. So I kind of like the whole that, there's so many stuff, so much stuff's going on right now with some pretty bad people. It's nice to see a movie based around simply good people. There wasn't this big bad villain. Good, good people uniting to do good things. Yes. Not, not against an evil or some sort, because like bad, you know, it's like they're, Let's well, call yeah, space just, evil, but just overcoming odds, like the human spirit. So I really appreciate that. That's what, like, same thing with Apollo 13. It's everyone working together to do one thing, and that's it's like a good, like, heartwarming type story yeah, movie. So yeah, it is. It still has like that I edge your seat tension, and it great. All right, so I guess let's wrap this up here, you guys. It's like final thoughts, and then your score out of ten. Cam, we'll be good start with you, so let's keep that going. Final thoughts. Uh, overall, very great movie. Very engaging. The cast was excellent. Everything acting wise was executed great. I'm gonna give this uh, a solid nine out of ten. I really liked it. All right, Doug. Again, I loved it. I'm still gonna have to finish the book just because I want to see what differences there were. I, there again, just some little things that I missed from the book that I thought added to the story, but the movie might have been too long. So I'm gonna go 8.5 out of 10. Real close to 9, but not quite yet there. Yeah, originally I wasn't entirely, you know, excited, excited for this movie. All of a sudden you're hearing these great things. I couldn't have been more excited. I went into this thing. And it, it's an absolute must-see. Everyone should go check this movie out. I've been trying to go more specific with my reviews because I felt like I was doing a lot of the same numbers. I'm gonna go like a 9.3 out of 10. Very specific, but it's an absolute must-see. I'll be buying this when it's out on DVD. Might even consider seeing it a second time in theaters. I would go see this movie. I will recommend this to everyone. If we're doing uh, specific scores, I'm gonna have to get 8.9 because I it's not quite that amazing groundbreaking movie just because my minor little quips about it. Uh, but at 8.9 then, it was just great. Yeah, go see this movie right for a good minute. Yeah, I'll so stick with a 9. All right, so we've got a 9.3 and 8.9 out of 9. So overall, we all love this movie, and I think everybody should go check this thing out. Right. Thanks for watching. This is AfterCurrentMovieChats.com. Stay tuned for more reviews.